Um, yeah, welcome to the session. Today I'll be covering a feature requested a few um, a few weeks ago, which is the light theme and the dark theme. Um, so we would be implementing like a dark theme, light theme switcher, uh, and seeing how we can style our components differently depending on the um, the theme we choose. Um, we can also go into storing the preferred theme in local storage or things like that. Uh, I found a cool article that uh, I kind of want to follow. Um, well, first of all, CSS Tricks is an awesome website, but it also kind of goes through how to very easily bare bones with no packages do um, the, a theme switch, a, a very basic theme switcher. Um, so I'll probably be doing that mostly, and it's going to be a lot of CSS and styling. And we'll learn about CSS variables today. Um, yeah, so let me get things set up. We have an issue open for this. It's the dark light theme, issue number five. So I'm going to create a new branch. called feature five um, light dark theme. Cool, okay, so let's look at what they are proposing we do. So we kind of understand the high level and then we'll try to implement this in our website. Uh, let me scroll to the top. So the basic, um, here they're just creating the app from scratch, removing whatever they don't need to. Um, so the basics of um, how this will work is we're gonna have a special property on any components uh, that we will trigger. And if the component, if the property data theme is equal to dark, um, then we will have different CSS variables triggered uh, differently. So here you can see that uh, in the root of our CSS, uh, they're defining some uh, CSS variables. If you're not familiar with CSS variables, don't worry, I'll um, show them in practice, but just think of them as regular um, programming code variables you can store values in them and then reuse the variables in multiple places and they will just reference the the value you store in them um so it's basically like you're writing code with css uh, what this selector means is that it's target any um any tag any element which has data theme equals to dark mm -hmm. um, so you can see they're adding it in here um, yeah, here's they're explaining how this all works. And then they have like a piece of state, which will also um, utilize local storage, which is not really the point, but um, you can see that they're, uh, the state itself is concerned of whether it's a dark or light theme. Uh, I mean, sure, we can also fetch it from local storage later on, but um, just keep in mind that we're tracking the states, whether it's a dark theme or a light theme. Um, and then, yeah, all what they are doing is saying, hey, um, here's our theme. Now this might be hard to read, actually. Let me open this in new tab. I don't know if this is any better. Yeah, so they're saying like, uh, hey, here's our theme. This is our state that we'll have. And um, we'll have a button that we're going to click. If we click that theme, we will switch between the dark and the light theme, right? If, if the theme was equal to light, so then it's going to be the dark. Otherwise, it's going to switch to light. Um, and then set theme to the new theme. 
we um, now the actual pr provision of the theme and changing the backgrounds of the components um, will happen with this attribute. So data theme equals theme. Um, and that's where the magic happens. They will assign different CSS variables depending on that value. Uh, they're providing like a small demo here that we can see. So yeah, we're just hitting the switch um, and it's going to switch like the text color and the background color based on uh, based on the state. So that's that's like the high level of what we're going to be doing. I'll try to implement this in our setup. Um, any questions before I begin? Oh, um, actually, this is actually my first uh, Monday coding thing. And previously I worked on Angular. So okay. React is quite new for me. So I just wanted to ask that TSX file, is it TypeScript, but written in JSX means JavaScript man? Exactly, yes. We're, I mean, um, yeah, good, good question. Cause um, they are like using TypeScript here. This is valid JavaScript, so this could as well be JSX. Um, but you're right. It's like a JSX file, but in TypeScript, so it's TSX. Um, that, that's the basics of it, right? Because like, all of your React files are JSX files. Yeah. Um, but they're also using TypeScript. They don't need to. They could just change TSX to JSX. Um, but yeah. Just okay. the extension you use. Yeah. Thank you. No worries. Yeah. Well, welcome if you're here for the first time. <laughs> um, all right. Let's try and do this. So I want to do the same setup and I want to be in my like root entry level component because that's where I want to define my theme state. And I want to be changing my theme state as top level as I as, as possible. Um, so, I mean, index.js is a very top level. This will render my menu. It's going to render my routes. I mean, I could just do it here. For all I care. Browser router. Yeah, because I don't have like an app components per se. Um, I have routing. I could wrap this in like an app components, I I suppose. And um then implement the theme or, or like in a theme provider kind of component. I'll probably do that and then we'll, we'll refactor it later on. So I'm going to, uh, here's my pages folder. Here's my components folder. I'm gonna have, probably call it a component, although it might fall out of the definition of a component. Uh, but I'm gonna say this is, um, Theme provider JSX. And I'm just going to copy the general structure here. So it's just going to be exports function theme provider. It's going to um, have a children prop and it's going to just return its children. Like I don't re really want this rendering anything specific for now. Um, we'll see, maybe I'll like pass some prop somewhere. Um, okay, so what I want to do is I want to have a piece of state here, right? So I want to just have my theme set theme. I'm going to just use, use state for now. Um, because they're in, in this example, they're using use local storage, but I don't want to 
um, messed with that at this point. So here's going to be my theme and set theme state. Wow, that was a wild import. Can I just have React? Thank you. And then by default, it's just going to be dark. Um, all right. Kind of having second thoughts because I just want to start somewhere simple. I may, may wrap this into um, something just to render like a switch. Um, the reason I'm having second thoughts is because they have a very simple example with like a div and a button and a span. Uh, ours is a bit more complicated because we need to deal with routes <clears throat> and like the menu that we always show. So it might get a bit more complex. Even thinking I could move this. Yeah, OK, we'll see. Um, for now, I'm just going to be return children. Mm. Let's have, yeah, I do want a button, like a switch that will switch the theme between um, light and dark. So I do want to wrap this in like a div. And I want a button with an on click. This will say switch. Right, and this is going to be my function. So switch theme is going to be an anonymous function that will just do uh, set theme. And if the theme was equal to dark, then it's going to become light. If it was light, then it's going to become dark. Right, so it's just flipping the state here. Um, cool. Okay. We have like a useless piece of state and a useless button. Uh, let's see how this looks. Cause I don't think it's going to look great, but I just want to see, um, button somewhere at least. Okay. I wonder if it's like black text that's impossible to see or if I even need to restart my server. Let's be safe and it's also use our custom button because we have a special component for buttons. Custom button. Uh, and right, so that actually has button text. Well, I'm going to restart this server just to be safe. Okay, I still don't see it, which is disturbing. But let's find out if the structure changed or if I did something wrong. So here's our root element. Uh, let's go up this a bit. Uh, is there a way to use debugger? Like we write the statement debugger. Uh, in which way do you want to use debugger? Means, uh, I'm sorry, I have no idea about React, but uh, in Angular, we used to write the word debugger about the code. Oh. So we could directly find it if it's not coming. 
Good point. Yeah, there is absolutely a way of doing this. In fact, you can see that it's not hitting it. Um, I mean, I, I can actually probably prove that that's possible uh, in like a home JS component, right? Because we're in the home component right now. Um, Yeah, so you can see that we are paused on a debugger. Yeah, good point. We could put like just debugger statements um, and stop on them, which yeah. is a, another way of yeah testing this. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, this will probably happen a couple of times. So yeah, this is this actually. Thank you for, for the tip. Uh, this actually proves that we are not hitting this, right? We're not hitting our theme provider. And of course we are not, because I'm not using it now that I think about it. Um, right, we're not stopping on the breakpoint, but that's because theme provider is not used anywhere except this file. <laughs> Created the file, got to include it. <clears throat> so we want our theme provider to wrap everything, like our browser router, which uh, is responsible for routing. Um, so I'll probably put it even above browser router and like this way. Oh, and that's why I don't like using debugger because it changes focus. Okay. Here we go. And okay, so this is probably our button. You cannot see it at all, but it's there. Uh, actually, our button components is completely white. So I'm just going to use, um, I'm going to use a regular button kind of. Going back a bit so we can actually see it better. Uh, better is relative, but you can kind of see this change theme sign, right? So now that I click this, nothing happens. It just changes the state in this component. Uh, but I want to follow the tutorial and actually make our, for example, like the, the, the bare minimum that I want to do. Uh, is change the background to something else, not like this dark background, but like a white or um, a light dark uh, background for us. So, okay, let's go to the top of the tutorial and see what we need to do. So we need to include our root, like the default CSS variables, and the data theme dark CSS variables um, anywhere, um, sorry, in, in, in the index CSS file, which is the root CSS file. So in our SRC, <clears throat> we'll have index.js and index CSS. Um, have a lot of things going on here, but I'll probably be putting it somewhere at the top. So this is font face. And here's our root and data theme dark. So the backgrounds, uh, I kind of don't care about these three for now. Uh, all I care about is the background. So the background of our dark theme, I'm just going to steal. Uh, it's this custom color in here. And I'm going to show you how to use CSS variables um, instead of uh, the actual hard coded values. So this is the way you define a CSS variable. Now, if you want to use one, you would use, my memory doesn't like me to use var, and then the name of the CSS variable, which is background. 
Um, so now our header and our main colors um, have a background color equal to background. And in fact, because it's white by default, I think we should see this change in here. And exactly that's what we see. It's completely white. Uh, obviously, you don't see any text because that's all gone. Um, maybe I'll actually do the text as well because I think that's going to be easier to. Uh, yeah, like you can see that there is a global rule for color white. Uh, I can say that text primary. Okay, that didn't work well. Um, text primary is white in a dark theme. And text primary is black in a light theme. And the color we'll use bar text primary. Cool. So now we actually see some text here. Uh, the logo is not visible. I think there is like, I um, wonder if I can like select this, but there, there is like a, uh, because it's transparent, there is also white text on the image, which is not seen. So we'll need to deal with it case by case in each, uh, each component, but this doesn't look terrible. Um, in fact, it doesn't look worse than our <laughs> dark theme. I'm actually very pleased with how this looks at this point. Um, maybe this will not require a lot of changes in terms of like switching and using the variables itself. But okay, let's make this switch do something because right now, um the state is local and we want to switch the theme if we click the um the button um all right so uh, for changing the theme we are going to use local storage means store the value whether it's dark or white in local storage and then accordingly change Yes, uh, that's what they do in the article. Um, they use so they use a specific hook, uh, which is use local storage, and then I'm guessing they would retrieve the value in different components from local storage um, if they want to like reference it somewhere, which is a fair approach. Um, might just do that. A thing I wanted to um, maybe spend some time doing uh, was doing like a provider because there's some uh, there's a package, a pretty uh, nice React package called Context um, that allows you to um, instead of passing state down to your children with props, um, you would just have a provider top level, and then you can reference that provider somewhere in the uh, down the tree, and you don't need to pass props uh, down the tree. Uh, but local storage kind of plays the, the role of that provider, right? You can put stuff there and then read stuff from local storage down down the tree if you want to. Um, so maybe today we just do local storage. Um, okay. That's going to be good enough. So I think use local storage is also a package they install. Let's check. Um, yeah, so they install npm use local storage. Let's do that. It's going to be as simple as doing um, changing use state to use storage, use local storage, and then referencing a variable from local storage in the places where we want it. All right. Um, cool, uh, we got this. So now we just need to say use local storage. Don't need to use state anymore.
Um, and presumably this should be stored. Let's check if this actually works. So let's refresh. I'm going to open my local storage. <clears throat> Um, yeah, this is some keys from my other projects. So here, yeah, so it's changing the theme here to light and dark. Uh, the key, I wonder if you can specify the key. Uh, how do they do it in the tutorial? Local storage. Okay, so the first, the first parameter is the key and then the value is the second parameter. Um, yeah, so theme is changing here, and this is great. Okay, so now we can reference this in other components and assign the data theme uh, attributes to the um, to the elements that care about the theme. So, uh, for instance, I'm just thinking how to do this better. Uh, the background of any component <clears throat> is determined globally. It used to be determined globally, but this rule of like um, header main CSS selector. So the header and the main uh, in the HTML would have background color var background. So this means that um, I think actually maybe data theme only needs to be declared once now that I think about it. Because I'm not sure how this will work and we'll need to try. Uh, but I think if this attribute like if, if the CSS rule is triggered, it's just going to reassign the variables once. It doesn't matter which element it is on. So we could even say something like, um, we can even put it on this div, for example. Um, uh, what did we call this? Data theme, right? data theme equals um, and then we just need to reference our theme cool okay so we got our dark theme and now if i hit the button we can switch between dark and light this is awesome so you you can notice that um i put it like on a random component but the background of our header and our uh, body is changing and also the text is changing, right? The text is changing between white and black. Um, and the body is changing from this like darkish to white. And that's because I think my assumption is right. It's just reassigning the variables each time it hits this rule. Um, and then everywhere else, we're just depending on CSS, right? Like we're just depending on these variables here. So this is super, super cool. Um, now, my question is, where do I want to put this button? I'm actually probably going to commit this because this works, uh, but I definitely don't want this button to be um, at the top here. I just, I probably, most probably, I just want like, a, um, usually you would see, uh, let's see if I can find an example. There is a package called Beautify. It's a material framework for Vue.js. I think they have like a light theme, dark theme switch. Okay, that's not what I was looking for, but I was hoping there would be something easier. Like I'm looking for just a simple button that would um, change the icon if I click on it. Um, okay, it doesn't matter what it is. I'll put it in the menu. 
and um, I'll probably be putting this logic in the menu as well. Now that I look at this, I wonder if we even need theme provider at all as a component, because I thought we would need, need this to like provide the state down. Um, but because this works with CSS variables, which is very cool, um, I don't really need this. I just need to maintain the state somewhere in my app, for example, in the menu component. And uh, yeah, set a data theme attribute on a random component, and this will work. So I might not even, I, I might just incorporate this into my menu components and uh, not deal with it here. Um, add theme switcher button. Cool. Uh, give me a few moments to check something. Okay. So let's try this. Um, bare minimum, I want to just move the button to my menu component. We have menu.js, which actually should be menu.jsx. Quickly change that. OK. I think this is determining whether I see this is like a hamburger toggle. Yeah, because we also need to account for the mobile view and the mobile looks like this, like this with a hamburger. So we'll need to think about it. Um, I think in the mobile view, I just want an icon beside the hamburger. <clears throat> Maybe like a favicon? Do you mean? Like the icon to change color. Um, what do you mean by favicon? Because favicon is this, if I'm not mistaken. Like I was thinking just putting an icon to the left of the hamburger or- Not favicon, I forgot that. <laughs> the icons which we use over and the page exactly. Um, sorry, what, what is your suggestion again? Um, usually on mobile sites, we have that icon if you want to increase the font or change the theme. I forgot what exactly it's called. Oh. Yeah. Um, I think, I mean, I from what I've seen, it's just like an icon in here. So like going back to the Beautify example, uh, you can see that like, you, can, you can change the language. Um, you might even be able to, wow, that's so weird. Why would anybody want right to left? <laughs> okay, that tripped me out. Um, anyway, like just a set of icons at the top that will control um, whatever you want, but Let's see how they do it in the mobile view. So they leave, uh, they leave the most important stuff at the top still, and that's what I want to do. I want to keep um, my theme provider icon here, but yeah, they still have like a menu here. I'm just gonna do it like an icon beside the hamburger. I think it's fine. Okay. So the way we've dealt with icons so far um, is through just just fetching them as SVGs. So you can see the close SVG and the menu SVG, uh, and it kind of works. Could just keep doing that. Um, 
let's see, 1835, I probably won't go into there, but there is a package for using material icons, um, which I think we have a PR for. Um, let's, let's use, uh, let's just use a pure button. If I have time, I'll style it into like icons and stuff. Um, and we'll go from there. So this is a list. I'm just gonna have my button in here. So I'm gonna actually split view here. Okay, here's my button. I'm gonna place it in here. I now again I'm gonna switch and use custom button. And this should be text button text equals this guy. So it doesn't know what switch theme is, which theme and the theme state will now live in the menu. Something similar to this. Uh, use local storage. Let's import that. <clears throat> and we want to put data theme theme somewhere. Uh, we can just put it on the like topmost div. I think it's going to be fine. Uh, we don't need theme provider. So I can delete this file. And I can remove it from my index.js. Theme provider, theme provider, theme provider. Theme is not defined. Okay, I'm gonna restart this because it's looking at a file that's not there. Theme. Okay, that's very white. I wonder why. Although our theme is dark. Um, I mean, it sure does have stuff in here. I might have been wrong with the assumption that the data theme provider can be on in any page. Um, our theme is dark. Let's change it to white. So we'll see if that will change anything. Okay, we can see now our button. And it does change the theme, but it only changes the theme for the menu. So let's try and put, oh, but now this is gonna be tricky because we do need to have the data theme somewhere. Uh, oh boy. Um, okay, I might've been too soon to delete the theme provider. Let's see. Maybe, yeah, maybe like, <laughs> I think I'm getting, going like back and forth a lot of times here, but I'm gonna bring back theme provider. Cause I think it should be top level. And again, it's an assumption I know, I don't know for sure, but it's the only thing I can think of function theme provider. And again, it's gonna accept children. It's going to return child, it's gonna return a div and the children 
inside the div. And it will have our, uh, whoops, it will have our data theme equals theme. So we don't have the theme state. We'll need to bring it back again. Uh, I'm not going to rip it out because we do want that, but it's going to be the same exact thing. So local storage. And we don't need set theme, just need the theme. And that should work. Maybe. Let's try restarting this. <clears throat> Arr, grr. Thought this would work. only changes the theme for the menu component for some reason. Oh, wait, because yeah, because I didn't remove this data theme either. That might be the issue. Okay, well, now it just doesn't work. Yeah, with when you when you're modifying like root level or close to root level stuff, it's good to rerun the server um, because sometimes it might uh, the issues might not just be hard reload. Okay, it's changing the theme in local storage doesn't seem to matter for this guy. Oh, I know why. And this is exactly why we would need to. Um, um, this is exactly why local storage state would not work, I think. Um, I don't think the theme, like the, this stuff will re-render if um, I change local storage from, from like a random component. It's not listening for changes to local storage. I mean, I can prove this with... Um, um, I'm going to log in here, just like logging the theme. So you can see that the theme is light, but when I change the theme, it's not happening, like nothing is happening. Although if I log the theme in the menu component, Uh, let's call this something like menu theme. You can see that the menu theme is changing. Uh, and that's because I'm doing the set theme in this component and it's re-rendering just this component, not the whole app. And it's also the reason why um, we were seeing the theme being changed only in menu and not in the whole app, right? That's because... Um, only when when you use hooks in a component in React, it's going to only re-render that component. It's not going to re-render uh, the whole app, which would be very wasteful in terms of resources. Okay, this is actually good. <laughs> Surprisingly enough, um, we went to like this button that does nothing, but I think I have enough time to bring in. Um, fix for this, which instead of storing it local storage, which we, we can still do, we can still store it in local storage. Um, it will ensure that we have like a top level provider, um, which will re-render the whole app if our theme changes. Okay, let's look at this. Um, so, oh, sorry. Actually, uh, I <laughs> this is very stupid downward. Uh, so the the home page is there. So the components are divided into the menu part and the below part are different components, like for home resources, calendar, and block, correct? Mm -hmm. So you yep. change mm -hmm. the theme for the menu. So it was only affecting that. And as it is stored in local storage, the other components are not getting the theme. 
Well, that's the thing. So um, it can get it on the initial render. When you initially render the page, it will get it from local storage. Sure, it will trigger. Um, and you can see that <clears throat> if I re-render the component, uh, sorry, re-render the page, theme will be light um, in my theme provider. It's only being triggered once. It's reading from local storage once. If I, <clears throat> sorry, if I change the theme to dark and then reload my page, my theme will be dark. You can see that the theme changed, right? Um, but the problem is that when I hit this button, it's only going to re-render stuff in my menu component. Um, you can fetch, yeah, go mm -hmm. ahead. As the button is there in the menu thing, and if I'm not wrong. Sorry, I couldn't hear you. Uh, I, I don't know how to explain because we are making changes in the menu file. So the other components are not able to get the theme change correctly. Means we are rendering it after that, if I'm not wrong. Yes. Um, the problem is that when you change local storage, uh, other components are not listening on that change. They won't re-render themselves when you change local storage. Sure yeah. thing, they can read from it and they can fetch value once, but they won't be able to um, re-render it. That's why if I like change the theme to light or dark, you can th see that the menu theme is changing and so is the local storage value. Um, this will be swapping, right? But it's going to apply the changes only if I refresh. So if I hit like set this to light and refresh, now it's going to update. All, all the components will be re-rendered. They will read from local storage. They will uh, fetch the, the proper theme. So somehow we need to tell from the menu components, say, hey, uh, this top level thing, this theme provider, please update yourself. Mm, yeah. I got that. So that's that's the issue. Actually, uh, I worked in Angular and we did the same theme thing in Angular and we had the same issue and we even okay. solved it and now I don't remember it. It's just <laughs> nostalgia all over again. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, the way I wanted to solve this was through um, through context. Uh, I'm not even sure. So like, he, here's the premise, like context provides a way to pass data through the component tree without having to pass props down manually at every level. Um, so the way you would change a child, like a parent from the child, um, you could pass props from the parents to the child and then have um, like callback functions called uh, by the child um, saying like, I don't know, um, on theme changed or things like that. Um, I might even like implement this the dumb way to show you first and then we we'll, might use context. Um, so, Let's see, like here's our menu components. I'm gonna close everything unrelated here. And we also have our index.js. So the theme provider is above our menu components. What we can do, um, let's see if this will work. Um, so just for, like a stupid solution, uh, not stupid, it's a solution, uh, would be providing a callback to the menu saying like on theme changed, do something, uh, re-render myself, or like change the theme, whatever. Um, so instead of like setting the theme, I could be calling a callback here. So I could pass this in saying um, on theme changed will be a function. Then switch theme. Um, 
if all of this logic I can still buy, I can bring back to theme provider. I can say uh, when I hit the button on click, I'll say on theme change. So I'm going to bring back lo like local storage we already have in the theme provider. I'm going to bring back um, switch theme to theme provider. And I'm going to bring back set theme mistake mutation. Um, now it won't really work with like children. So I'll need to do this hacky way of um, instead of having a children prop, we'll just have this as a self-closing tag and render all of this inside theme provider just for now. So, I mean, I'll need to import all of this stuff. Menu, routes, routes. Bear with me. So I'm gonna steal the imports here. All right, and now remember we were providing the on theme change. Now I can use this and I can say, uh, yeah, here we're only providing the theme, uh, only rendering the theme provider. Theme provider is going to render everything else. Um, I can say, hey, menu, I can, say on themes changed, not whatever I wrote there, theme changed equals my switch theme. So I'm saying whenever we hit the button at the top of the menu, uh, trigger this function, like just, just deal with the state and with the switching in the theme provider. Don't deal with it in um, in the menu components. Let's see if this will work. Oof. Um, right, because this is probably in the wrong path. Um, probably this, I would assume. Okay, SRC components theme provider. That's this guy, right? No, wait. Where am I importing this? Can't resolve components menu menu. Right, because it's actually just this. Yeah. Here we go. So once again, just to recap, uh, the reason this works is because now the state and the set theme are in like the topmost component. This is the entry point of our application. If I change the state in my theme provider, my whole app will re-render. Whatever you see in the screen, all of the like. Imagine the big DOM tree, all of the components will be scrapped and then recreated again. Um, and that's why it will fetch the local storage values again, change the CSS variables, render different colors. And that's why we see this in action. Um, so yeah, hopefully that makes sense. I mean, yeah, the spacing needs love and the styling as well, but I'm very pleased how this turned out because we, yeah. Basically now theme provider is at the top of the DOM tree. Sorry? Theme provider is at the top of the DOM tree. It's like the main component. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. 
like um, I'm going to find this data theme just to show you. I'm going to switch to my elements. Here is my div ID root. So in React, I think in Angular, it's going to be similar. Uh, this component will contain all of your rendered HTML um, that will be dynamically rendered. And here's my div data theme doc. It's like the first component that will be rendered. And then if I expand this, I can, um, here's my okay, menu. Yeah, got that. Right. Yeah, got that. So yeah, that's that. I'm going to commit this. Um, move theme button to menu. All right, I'm very pleased we got this done in one session. Um, actually, thought this would take a bit more. I mean, obviously, this needs a bit more styling, and uh, there are going to be pages that look a bit worse. Actually, I just remembered I was talking about font awesome. I was saying favicon, favicon, but it was actually font awesome, which we used to use. Like the icons are that you can directly use it to uh, say that again. What? Font awesome, font awesome. Oh, font awesome, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I was talking um, about that. So fonts, yeah, font awesome is a good um, icon library just for people that might not know. Uh, yeah, it's free. You can install an NPM package with it and just reference some icons. Very, very easy to use, actually. Um, yeah. So yeah, I don't know. Wow, that really, this is what you will give me for ball? Okay. Oh, you can even try for theme one. They are really good ones, like the half moon thing, like dark and mm -hmm, bright. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And they also have this line to directly use in React.js. I just checked. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, um, this is cool. Uh, the only, like I, I put a restriction on our website that we will try and use um, Google theme. So that's why we use um, Google fonts. We are also trying to use Google icons. Material. There's um, there are material icons. Basically, you're using your Google material for yeah, yeah basically. Yeah. Um, Which, yeah, I mean, <laughs> good point. We could, there, there's a library to just literally use material UI uh, in React, which we, we could have incorporated. Uh, maybe that's a, like another session on its own. I'm trying to not put a lot of libraries in this app because like trying to have these sessions targeted to React and like bare bones HTML, CSS, JavaScript as much as possible. Um, for example, like this theme provider, right? Like we didn't use anything except um, I mean, that local storage package, which was just a nice utility for local storage. Um, but yeah, like, um, I'm sure there would be more ways of handling themes with more packages that I could have brought in. Uh, but yeah, there is React material UI package for sure, uh, MUI, which I think we will bring in. I probably will need to. Um, now that I think about it, yeah, it has very nice like toggles, very nice chips and such, and it's generally looks good here. <laughs> this is actually exactly what I wanted to go for, <laughs> like a simple, yeah. simple icon to switch between dark theme and light theme. Um, all right, yeah, this, this is going to be just some cleanup that I'll probably do on my own. Uh, but the bulk of it, I'm happy that we got this done today. Um, yeah. yeah, I'll probably wrap up here. It's seven o'clock. Um, yeah, do you have any questions before we go? No, currently, no, I'm just starting React. 
Yeah, for sure. Um, if you want to, you can, uh, there is a... Google YouTube playlist? Yes, the, the, there is a playlist of the recordings um, that I'm doing if you want to see how we've got to this point, if, uh, if this is yeah, your I first time. The link. There were like seven, eight videos and I need time for that. But I thought anyways, I get to learn something, so I joined. No, yeah, for sure. Yeah, and if, if you if you just want to hang out and like ask questions and something is not uh, not clear, uh, feel free to speak up. And yeah, thank you for asking all of those questions. It's very nice to um, go over and explain things dive deeper. And you had very nice suggestions with like debugger and um, pointing to icons and stuff. Yeah, thank you. Thank you actually for teaching me. Yeah, for sure. All right, yeah, I'm gonna go. <laughs> I'm gonna wrap up. Okay. Um, yeah, feel free to join next time if you um, want to hang out. And yeah, see you yeah. soon. Thank you for joining. Bye. Bye.